Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And the ones that mother gives you don't do anything. <laughs> this is a great song. Go ask Alice. Jefferson is the Jefferson Airplane White Rabbit. It's about pills. One pill makes you larger, one pill makes you small. I mean, that applies to uh, those in the media. They take the small pills. Uh, everyone in the media takes the Lilliputian pill. Every morning when they wake up, if they start to resemble a human being, they have to take a Lilliputian pill, and that applies to the river dancer herself, who was actually a mini-me of an actual journalist. She's a mini-me of what she was three years ago, but hey, fame does that to people. Eventually, everyone flames out, including myself. She has not yet understood that she's only human, and that the river dancer on Fox News right now has done more damage to the conservative movement, if you want to call it that, certainly the Republican chances to take the country back from the Democrat, Socialist, Islamist machine than anyone in the, in, the, in the country because she pits them against each other. Last night, the River Dancer pit everyone against Ted Cruz. Then Meat Loaf Jr., that's Mike Walachensky. Meat Loaf Jr., that snide face of his. That's, haven't you met kids like that when you were young? Always a smirk on their face. That's Walachensky Jr., Meat Loaf Jr. I, 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 I call him Meat Loaf Jr. because his dear old dad, Mike Wallace, the guy had dignity. I don't even know what his politics were. I'm sure he was a Democrat like all of them. But uh, how could you not like a man who beat up a parking meter aide and threw meatloaf at him? How could you not like a newsman who threw a, tra a, a, a takeout dish of meatloaf at a meatloaf guy giving his driver a ticket when he ran in for meatloaf uh, on a takeout? How could you not, you know? And as I say, the meatloaf doesn't fall far from the wagon. But it's Friday. I'm sure you're all exhausted. Exhausted, brain dead from this. I myself, did I watch the debates? No. Actually, no. I went to a Chinese restaurant to have a drink and some uh, happy hour food. It was raining, you see. Teddy was sick. He was with the dog care. Irene and I got so lonely for Teddy. I said, I'm coming to get him in the rain. And I knew that if someone's healing when they're sick, they want to be in their own house. I know it from my parents when they were sick. People want to be healing in their own house or, you know, pass away in their own house. Anyway, I got him home, and I'm giving him his meds. I'm giving him some small, some pills make you smaller, some pills make you bigger. He's getting four a day of the stuff shot in his mouth. I don't know whether they make him smaller or bigger, but he is whacked out and stoned on the, on the sofa right now. I have a junkie dog from the veterinarian. But look, he's in pain. The sutures are in the lower jaw. So a couple of things to talk about. Please note that no Trump ads run in the Michael Savage show. Please make careful note of that. No Trump ads run in the Michael Savage show. That's important for you to know. Number two, the ratings. When I came home, all I asked those who I emailed was, how were the ratings on Fox during the Republican um, wrestling match without Donald Trump? That's all I wanted to know, because if the ratings were cl even close then Trump would have gambled and lost. That's right. It's as simple as that. It's a numbers game. He played a stare down with Rupert Moloch, and he says he got an apology. I'm sure he did. They probably told the river dancer to not kick him in the groin again, and he didn't do it anyway. So the thing is, what were the ratings? About half of what they were at the peak without him. That's the, You know, you can read gibberish on this, but I'm a, an expert in, in statistics, Having studied epidemiology for many years, I had to learn how to read data. The data's simple. Last night's debate on Fox News Channel averaged 12 million viewers. That's a nice number. But the first debate on FNC, they had 24 million, 23 million, or something like that, right? So it's about 15%, 50%. Sorry, I'm a little distracted from the medication I gave the dog. Maybe some of it slipped into my, my pores. I don't really know. So Trump did what he had to do. I mean, the headline is Trump, Trump, uh, Trump, Trumped Fox. If I were to write the headline, it would be Trump, Trumped Fox, right? 
And that's it. Or Trump trumped Murdoch. The two moguls, I mean, they're big guys, and they were fighting. And he beat him. So, okay, let's put all that aside, the ego stuff and the this and the that, the that, the do. Yesterday's show was, I would say, the peak of all my peaks because my monologue, Blood in the Water, Purists versus Pragmatists, no one has beat it yet in the entire campaign. I mean, I will say that because who else is going to say it? You? You're going to blow my horn for me? I read the blogs. I read the articles. Most of them are pretty standard. Some of them are excellent, but lately there's been nothing. My article of Blood in the Water, Purists versus Pragmatists, is on michaelsavage.com and nowhere else. You can find it, the third story on the right. Blood in the Water, Purist versus Pragmatist. I would invite you to read it, and I would invite you to share it with friends because I think it says it all. And all I'm going to do is read you the last paragraph, which is a total of three sentences. And here it is. So I leave you with this thought. Pragmatists versus purists. There is room for both. However, on, however, only one can win. Think about what I just said. Pragmatists versus purists. There's room for both strains of philosophy, but only one can win. I'm Michael Savage. That's it. Cut to the chase. Next case. You know, walk along. That's all. Keep going. At 12.30 Pacific, which is in 20 minutes, 3.30 Eastern, which is in 20 minutes, Rick Santorum has been invited to join the show for one reason. He certainly can't win the presidency, but this is a stand-up guy, as they used to say in New York. He is a guy who went on the stage with Donald Trump at the Warriors thing, the alternate Warriors event. Unlike Huckabee, who I was real, I, I didn't know what to make of Huckabee. Now I know is don't trust him. Because although Huckabee went on the stage along with Santorum, with Donald, the next day, morning today, Huckabee goes on CNN and stabs Trump in the back, basically. So Huckabee is a, a media. Remember, Huckabee comes from the media, nowhere else. And so what would you expect? Another one, that's all. Another one with the guitar and with Jesus in the Bible. He's still a backstabber. With the Bible, with the guitar, with the R. Shucks, with the Roy Rogers. He's still a, a, slick, a slick con artist. End of story. Huckabee, forget about it. Santorum, good. Huckabee, bad. I'll make it uh, Animal Farm-esque for the audience. Most people don't know what I'm talking about. They hear a guy with like a gravelly voice. What is he talking about? I don't even know who these guys are. I'm scanning the dial. Something about him. Lucky me. Uh, Applebee's. There a special at Applebee's for like a roast beef. Can I get a free pizza at, at Pizza Pizza? They don't know what I'm talking about. The average person doesn't even know what's going on. They have no idea about the debates, know what they mean. All they know is that Donald Trump is good and everyone else is bad. They know that Hil Hillary is a criminal and a liar and that she's probably going to go to jail. I think even the average jerk knows that by now. Even the liberals are turning on her. And what came out today, some, I mean, did you see, did you see the headline? Some Clinton emails too damaging to release. I mean, she's going down. This one's going down, and I'm going to I'll make a prediction right now. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I'm one man. I'm talking to you like you're in the living room with me. And here it is. If she goes down, believe me, believe me, the billionaires and trillionaires who run the Democrat Party, don't, don't think it's run by Karl Marx and his minions, uh, the billionaires and trillionaires who live off the gravy train, the unions, the fraudsters in the uh, health industry, to name a few, they're not going to let Bernie Sanders anywhere near the prize. Are you joking? So who are they going to run? What I said two weeks ago, you don't have to be a genius. They're going to run old Joe Biden. It's going to be a very tough uh, campaign for Donald Trump if Biden runs. Why? Because Biden is a certifiable moron, a total moron, who is nothing and has always been nothing but a front man for the Democrat machine. But he is a, I'm telling you like it is now, don't take umbrage at what I'm about to say. I try to speak truthfully as best I can. If you're going to have two approximately equal in height white men with white teeth running, and one is like a nice, you know, oh, we know him. Oh, yeah, that's that guy. Uh, he was with Obama. Oh, what the heck? You're going to get an awful lot of independence going over to Joe Biden because they confuse him. They confuse him for, you know, with someone he isn't. Let's put it to you that way. He is a stooge of the far left. But it's going to give Trump a lot, of, a lot of trouble. I pray to God it would be Trump versus the commie or against the criminal. If it was, 
If it was the, the builder versus the criminal or the commie, the builder wins. It's, if it's the builder versus the Bilderberg, forget about it. If it's the builder versus the Bilderberg, that's it. Forget about it. It's tough. That was a nice one for you. That was an ace in the hole on the Savage Nation. Now I'm in the mood since I gave you a good spritz on an opener on a Friday with the rain, with the dog, with the drugs, with the tramacol and manacol, hanacol, tanacol, four medicines and new food. He likes baby food. Dog likes baby food. I haven't opened up a jar of baby food in four, four years. I had to go get him baby food. It's the only thing he likes. It's so cute. I get on my knees and I cry. You ever open the baby food bottles? It has a certain pop when the seal, you know, and you dip, you, you put the spoon back and forth, that, 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 that sound. It's like remembrances of things past without the uh, petite madeleines. For those of you who actually read a book many thousands of years ago, remembrances of things past, it was about when someone smelled a certain cake being made, it brought him back to his childhood. It's a very famous literary metaphor. So for me, I didn't want to watch the debates. What was I going to see? What was I going to see? So I opened baby food and spooned it to my dog after having a couple of uh, snacks over at a Chinese joint. And that was it. It was nice. It was good. It's raining. It's pouring. The old man isn't snoring. The phone number is 855-400-7282. I like the best line thus far, Robert smiled. I got a smile out of that millennial who runs my board. That's the beauty of having a uh, Skype set up in my, in my home is I get to see them. They, they used to be able to hide before Skype. They could blow their nose. They could wipe their eyes. They could eat pizza. I, they, everything they do now, I see. Old Mike watches them, and they watch me too, except when I put a paper over the uh, camera on the screen when I want total private. <laughs> I am enjoying radio. You know, whenever you hear someone saying I'm having a great time, usually they're not. <laughs> but if you hear me having a good time, you kind of know it by now. I want to have some rock and roll because it's open mic to Mike Friday. It's 855-407-282. Boy, do we have news for you. I'm just warming you up. It's not just that that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Zika virus. This is a scary one for those of you who are sex maniacs. Two cases hint at possible sexual transmission of Zika. Now, the CDC says, don't worry about it. We got it under control. The uh, World Health Organization says it's going to spread. There'll be 4 million cases before we know it. And now we're hearing that there's a Zika virus in semen. I'm sorry, you know, out of the word. It's not a dirty word. Don't get scared. You're an adult. On Monday, the New York Times reported that the only known case of the Zika virus, well, anyway, you get the picture. I'm going to tell you all about that later on on the Savage Nation. And of course, yes, I will lead you to my little tiny ebook on stimulating your immune system against all viruses, because fundamentally one virus is different than another in structure, but viruses tend to do similar things to us in some ways and dissimilar things in other ways. That is true as well. However, the best defense against any viral illness is a very strong immune system in plain English. And that means whether it's a common cold, you use common sense, and you fortify your immune system, as I have done for 45 to 50 years, using mega doses, not just the vitamin C. Linus Pauling was a great genius, but especially vitamin A and ver other nutrients that you don't really pay much attention to because they've not been popularized. It's all in that little 299 book. Believe me, this is not a big money maker. This was done in order to save humanity from the lies of the government. And it's I think it's on Amazon. It's not even available. I think you can pre-order it. But I'm doing it to spread the word because there are things you can do. You can take power over your own body and not wait for the NIH to tell you not to do anything. So we got a lot to cover uh, this week. Uh, let's see. Today is the 29th of January, as you know. And thank God the primaries are over on Monday. Oh, my God, I can't wait till Tuesday so I can get back to normal programming and uh, I can talk about epidemiology, nutrition, health, supplements, all of the things that sane people care about. I'll be back. So he kicked the bucket today. May he rest in peace. Not that's uh not the one singing is Grace Slick. And who can ever forget that song? Everyone remembers that song. <laughs> 